Johannes, we are Avatar, and you're watching Rock and Alive. We didn't know what to expect because we, you know, uh, it was the first time in a long, in a couple of years, I guess, that we even been to Paris or let alone in France. And uh, uh, that being said, we had already done a couple of shows with them, so we had a kind of an idea that it was going to be good. But Paris turned out to be one of the absolutely best shows of the whole tour. People were really, really wild. There was a guy dressed like Pikachu floating around and all this, it was a really, really, really good show here. Way better, more than we could ever hope for. Yeah, this is definitely the... <laughs> Would be a very good soundtrack, actually, if, yeah. if something fucks up and uh, the world explodes. Would definitely be a good soundtrack for... Fitting for that, because it is dealing with lots of dark themes. You know, dark, darkness of the mind and the darkness of the world. And there are many, many interesting and very scary things going on that indicates that... I don't know, I don't think the world's gonna explode in quite a couple of billion years, but there still is things that could happen that could really mess up the way we live on this planet right now. And uh, that becomes a symbol for all the dark themes of the album that we are trying to deal with in our own way and how we embrace that darkness and therefore we hail the apocalypse. We went to Thailand. Yeah, it's recorded in Thailand in last October, right? Yeah, yeah it's October. October. In the Thai countryside, in Ban Sarai. It's three hours out of Bangkok. So we isolated ourselves from the world and we, uh, we saw the beach for about 15 minutes. And we did a whole album, recorded live. Uh, that was the first time for us. Uh, because what we've been lacking, we felt with Black Walls, the album before, we found that we really set our, found our way, our path in music uh, in a way that we hadn't before. And with uh, Hail the Apocalypse, we continue going down that road and just adding stuff that we now have the courage to put there. For instance, recording it live, adding the human factor, and you know, because Led Zeppelin album sounds better than Ace of Base albums. Question we got on the drums. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, it is basically a, it, it's just drums, you know. It's a drum kit. <laughs> I can tell you, <laughs> you don't drum, have you know. the answer. <laughs> Time it's, to shine. It's a it's know. a Tama Tama kit with my little symbols. That's you know what I play. That's the best brand. Other than so, there's no real effects like there's no triggers there's nothing of that shit it's just microphone a good room and, and a good drummer and a good drummer and good drums you know that's yeah. what you need to so it's actually fairly yeah it's fairly simple mm. setup actually but that, that, that is you know the sound side of things like how it sounds but also like the, the grooves and the beats and everything how we wrote everything you know it, it's the core. You know, the, always the core of the album is is to us is the groove that we you know that in metal we're metal heads we do metal therefore the riff is the king you know the riff rules and no riff is better than the drums that comes with it, the groove that comes with it so we put lots of focus on that. Think about 
for example, as you always tell, you know, Iron Man. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, you know, you got Iron Man. That's the best riff in the world. And that's the worst riff in the world. It's very, very important that you get the groove right and put lots of emphasis on that. And we're trying to be very creative, but still keeping it simple and to the point. That's pretty much it, actually. And then, you know, then we ask, it's all about the human factor and that you hear who is playing the drums. Over the years, I feel like John has totally developed, you know, his own style. And because all of the phases we've been going through, you know, putting our extreme metal roots through the filter of rock and roll and talking about grooves again and all these other influences coming in there, it's really, you know, what defines us and, and his style. Well, we have always been a metal band, obviously, but we have deepened that relation even further, I guess. So yeah, I guess it's a couple of our most extreme songs that we've ever done is on this one that the death metal influences really shines through on a couple of the tracks like Death of Sound and uh, Tsar Bomba, stuff like that. Something, it's a bit of a continuation of some stuff that that we did on Black Walls, that the Circus Aura is something that we enjoy working with, a place that we enjoy to be at. And this is simply a different take on it. Jonas came with the first parts of it, almost just wrote it as a funny thing, you know, and it started off just being something funny, but then we figured out a way to make it badass. And. Uh, and that's pretty much it with it. That's you know we we we, we like that. It's, it, it, it's it, it it inspired us for being this fun and extreme and and in a way that can you put this on a metal album and can we do something serious of it? And yes, we can. And that is exactly, exactly what we did with it. Blood Angel, I guess, is some, another way of talking about the Fallen Angel and then the Lucifer of the situation. And that song, more than anything, that one is about feeling immense guilt and going through feelings of shame and failure and watching something you try to build fall apart and thus, in a way, being this Fallen Angel uh, is falling from grace. So I never thought about it actually that it was so kind of uh, opposites in title, but it's true. Well, we we always work out. Uh, the music video ideas ourselves together with our our man Juan Kalien. We did three videos with him also on uh, on Black Walls, and we continue working with him because we are a good, solid team where we can keep things in control, and it's really our own ideas coming through. And this was uh, this this one came from John. It usually does. He's the very he's the film guy, <laughs> video guy, most of all, of us in the band, and. Uh, yeah, it's just, I think it was a really cool way to tackle the theme of the of that song because we're dealing with this, the doomsday preacher and the inevitable end of things. It's pretty harsh, dark, almost with religious undertones and then turning that into something that kind of reminds of Charlie Chaplin in a way. It's like making comedy or something very serious makes me, it's, it's like Chaplin, he did like, you know, the dictator of modern times and that take on it, using comedy to portray something that is really, really dark and serious. Well, that depends on the shape of how it will be and what's going to happen specifically, if anything is going to happen. But it's more than anything, it's a symbol of this just riding through the storm and again this kind of embracement of 
the darkness that goes on in this album just dealing with things head on and there we are you know tackling and riding this storm on the open sea as a symbol of that and then as it turned out there's lots of water on this album in a way on black walls it was more fire it turned out to be the fire album a couple of tracks focus on that and that is used as a metaphor for many things and on this one it turned out that the ocean became a symbol for many many things happening on it and therefore it's very fitting with this apocalyptic storm that we ride through embrace and hopefully survive. Yeah, and then the idea and the hopes is that we'll be back and do it more extensively in the fall, after the summer. We hope to be back in full force and expand the touring schedule a whole lot. Because, like again, the, the last time we played it was in, here in Paris with Evan Selfold and Five Finger Death Punch, and that show blew our minds. And I feel like we have a beautiful friendship here that starts to start spoiling with it with the metal heads of friends who wants to we want to do more with that. That's all I know in French basically. <laughs> 